Avertissement, nous n'allons pas parler de jeux en réalité alternée, alternate reality games en anglais. En effet, ce sur quoi portera notre présentation est un dispositif hybride baptisé ARG par les internautes, mais qui ne respecte pas strictement la définition admise. Aussi, nous parlons à dessein dans notre titre de « nouveaux mécanismes du virtuel » pour faire contrepoint au terme « réalité » dans ARG. Le virtuel, en effet, n'est pas que synonyme d'informatique. Il désignera aussi dans notre présentation un caractère de potentialité infinie. Or, si les objets qui nous intéresseront ici adoptent parfaitement la philosophie du « this is not a game » propre aux ARG, contrairement à ces derniers, ils ouvrent le jeu sur une infinité de jouabilité sans clôture. Des objets tels que Ben Round, This House Has People In It, ou d'une toute autre manière Petscope, qui n'existent qu'à travers le médium informatique, Internet et ses différentes plateformes, méritent dès lors que nous les appelions ARG natif numérique, ou plus simplement Alternate Virtual Games, AVG. Une fois que nous aurions distingué ce type d'objet des ARG, nous pourrons mieux proposer des outils d'analyse pertinents à ces nouveaux dispositifs intermédiaux. It is therefore necessary for us to risk a definition of ARGs. And risky it is, as it is admitted among researchers that there is no singular definition. Nonetheless, Garcia and Niemeyer are proposing a synthesis of the various efforts towards a definition. ARGs would be digitally mediated games. Transpire in the so-called real world. Obfuscate their gameness. The this is not a game philosophy, infra tinag and are intermedial, ARGs usually have a puppet master, hidden or not, who guides the player's actions into the narrative. These players discover the ARG through entry points, rabbit holes, which often appear as aberrant signs that stick out from their environment, a misspelled word, an erroneous date, an out-of-place URL, etc. To quote Sean Stewart, ARGs are the way the 21st century likes to tell stories. And indeed, owing to the quasi-universal accessibility of computers and online streaming websites, the word ARG has become widely used to describe various mixed reality gaming practices. Testament to that, several YouTube channels are dedicated to identify and analyze ARGs, some of which don't necessarily fall into strict ARGs. These other ARGs, which we tentatively call AVGs, are confined on the Internet and require no actions outside of Internet. Hence why they are digital native, but that's not the whole story. Arguably the most emblematic AVG could be Ben Drowned, the haunted cartridge, published between September 7 and 15, 2010 by Alexander Hall on the Paranormal Board, X, on 4chan. Following the TINAG philosophy, Hall under the alias Jaduzable introduced the first part of his narrative by stating clearly that this was a true story. The narrative being one of a sophomore college student having been gifted an old Nintendo 64. Looking for old games to play, he finds a cartridge of Zelda, Majora's Mark in a garage sale. When he boots it up, he discovers a save file titled, Ben. When Jaduzable tries to play, his actions are hampered by odd glitches as he's being shadowed by a corrupted version of the protagonist Link. Jaduzable realizes the cartridge is haunted par the spirit of Ben, who starts haunting his computer as well. At the end of the story, Ben warns the readers that he will haunt their computers too. Ben Drowned first started as a forum thread. Soon however, Hall started uploading videos on YouTube documenting the glitches in the game. Sure enough, these glitches were done by him using a game shark on a ROM of the game. Readers became involved in trying to solve what happened to the entity named Ben by analyzing the hidden clues within Jaduzable's writing and videos. So what part of this is actually ARG? Sure enough, Ben Drowned was not introduced as a game, thus being in line with the TINAG philosophy. Moreover, during the second arc, called Moon Children, Players had to send emails to Jaduzable to try and get clues. Hall's presence as the puppet master was therefore still strongly felt. That said, some aspects of the game were innovative as they were based on the new spectatorship of the internet era. Namely, the rabbit hole becomes the work itself, and every part of it can become part of the player's scrutiny. As the player can stay on his computer to play the game, the elements from everyday life which are part of the narrative are so in a less clear-cut way. 
In a typical ARG, once the rabbit hole is found, the fictional semantization of daily life concrete realities is made explicit. In AVGs however, the entry point is already given as a work of fiction. The rabbit hole is the game. Thus the player of AVGs can and will experience the daily realities as part of the game, as their psychological states are made to act in aberrant ways. As much as Ben Drown still owes a great deal to the ARG apparatus, it kickstarted a more radical, virtual set of practices. Without a puppet master, without narrative closure, where events are told in a chaotic fashion. Alan Resnick and Robbie Ratcliffe's This House Has People In It, aired on Adult Swim and published on YouTube in March 2016 integrates these new elements fully. This short flick shows the supposed surveillance footage of a typical American suburban family, who experiences unexplained paranormal events, such as their daughter merging into the floor. The more curious watchers can click on the URL in the video description and access the website of a fictional surveillance camera manufacturer. A login page gives access to a secret file directory where one can find many more elements of the AVG. This house is undeniably constructed as a meta-ARG. The apparatus is tentacular and offers a self-referential image of the mechanisms at work in its interpretation, as well as a cryptic statement on social issues. We can say apparatus in the full sense of the word, as a vector of subjectification that gives a form to the individual subject, and regulates discourses and behaviors. As a network of goal-oriented elements, the apparatus mobilizes objects and techniques that will produce different subjectivities. In the case of this house, this conditioning is moreover made explicit insofar as the work makes interpretive mechanisms a theme. Among the numerous theories on this house, many make mentions of psychiatric afflictions. At some point during the short, we see a TV show called Sculptures Clayground, which you can watch on YouTube, where the presenter played by Resnick warns against a fictional pathology, Lynx disease. Resnick thus plays himself as the supposed puppet master by playing, ironically, the one person afflicted by Lynx disease, the disease of making connections. Besides, apophenia, a symptom of over semantization of insignificant elements, or paranoia are frequently mentioned as typical phenomena in the resolution of ARGs. These altered states of perceptions are indirectly discussed in the work within the broader theme of public health, and are also given as the way to play this house. The Lynx disease relates as much to the narrative of the this house, as to the spectatorship and its ability to conjure meaning. Consequently, the intermediality and the self-referentiality within the apparatus stratify the discourses on it. The visual corpus of this house forms a first layer made up by the website of the videos found in the secret file directory and the website of Sculptures Clayground. These two add-ons to the initial corpus enrich considerably the video corpus of the surveillance cameras and give access to other supports. Out of their contents, we will get audio recordings, various photos, texts concerning Lynx disease, and email correspondence, as well as a video game which once completed gives access to new elements, which form yet another layer. If we talk contagion and intermediality, it is striking to see how the deciphering efforts of the This House invoke objects that are ever more distant from the original video. For example, other productions of Alan Resnick are mobilized, albeit having no apparent link with This House. Unedited footage of a bear, from 2014, Visitor information, from 2015. The TINAG philosophy is stretched to its limits, for the whole body of work production from the authors can be invested as an element of a hypothetical interpretive resolution. From an objective point of view, the contagion does not take place at the level of the apparatus. It is rather the altered perception of the player, that is, apophenia or paranoia, that will turn diverse and scattered elements into meanings, based on analogies or metonymies. From an epidemiological point of view, the contagion operates through the aberrant salience experienced by observers. The tendencies towards a hermeneutic paranoia that each one can develop are the vectors of contagions that are almost completely remonte from their object. This is also made apparent in AVGs by the fact that no puppet master is here to guide the player through the narrative. In a seminal article from 2003, This Is Not A Game, Immersive Aesthetics and Collective Play, Jane McGonigal voices her fear about the gamification at play in the TINAG philosophy. 
In this article she talks at length about what is arguably the first ARG, The Beast. The Beast was a prolonged promotional campaign for Steven Spielberg's new movie at the time, AI, released in June 2001. Clues were hidden in the promotional posters and trailers, leading to websites where the users were tasked with solving a murder mystery set more than a century in the future. But some of the players, McGonagall says, took the TINAG motto a bit too far when they tried to apply it to the events of 9-11. And this tendency to continue seeing games where games don't exist is, she notes, a possible danger of the TINAG philosophy. McGonagall has put the finger on one aspect that is, in our own hypothesis, essential to understand how players receive information when playing ARGs, but more notably so when playing AVGs. That is, players are in a state where virtually any element can become part of the experience of AVGs. We would rather say then that players of AVGs continue to see games where games may not exist. The nuance is important because the TINAG philosophy does not work the same way in ARGs and in AVGs. Antero Garcia and Greg Niemeyer start off the introduction to the their book Alternate Reality Games and the Cusp of Digital Gameplay by saying, if you weren't reading this book, it would still exist. However, a game only exists when it is played. This is especially true for alternate reality games because they are co-created by players with every move that is made. What this tells us is that ARGs are space and time dependent events. Therefore, their replayability is either non-existent once the puppet masters declare the end of the game, or they are somewhat reenactable through archives of the game. However, Garcia and Nimai's statement needs not hold true for AVGs. If we take the example of this house has people in it, the video itself is the entry point. It leads to other videos, other websites and a secret file directory where most pieces of the puzzle can be found. But the puzzle to what? The truth is, there is no mystery to solve here. There is no stated goal, no narrative either. Moreover, there is no development in time, the pieces of the puzzle are made available forthwith. Anyone can at any time access them. The player is therefore left alone to try and piece together a coherent narrative between a virtually endless set of elements. And since there is no goal-driven narrative, the interpretations and theories about the work are limitless. We now fall back on the idea of aberrant salience. In psychiatry, a salience is the process by which events and thoughts grab attention, drive action and influence goal-directed behavior because of their association with reward or punishment. When one's attention is grabbed despite there being no object to grab it, we enter a state of aberrant salience. And associating meanings to sensory inputs in the absence of sustaining stimuli is the basis for paranoid schizophrenia. That is, a state where everything and anything can become the symbols of a coherent, but ultimately fictional, higher dimension of reality. However we don't wish to say the player of an AVG becomes psychotic by watching a YouTube video. However, salience mechanisms give us at least one end of the method to study AVGs as they reveal a trait of spectatorship in the 21st century. The digital medium is not only virtual because it's informatics, it's also virtual because it enables interaction and even co-creation between the spectator and the work. Narratives within AVGs do not follow that reward or punishment logic. In other words, they are not goal-oriented, unlike games. Because the puppet master, when there is one, doesn't provide a coherent narrative, the player must construe a narrative from whatever elements they can find within the work itself. To quote Julian Shu, the spectator is now, a cerebral automaton, a paranoid interpreter. In his book All That Is Solid Melts Into Air, The Experience of Modernity from 1982, Marshall Berman describes modernity as the experience of the melting down of traditional structures of society and the redefining of time and space. The self ceases to be a stable entity and is felt more as a succession of transient mental states. As it turns out, French writers known as the symbolists at the end of the 19th century also felt this paradigm shift. The fragmentation of the readership and the commodification of books as a merchandise contribute to isolate the writer near the fringe of society. Modernity is also the crisis of communication, signifies having become obtuse, opaque, free from fixed meanings. The symbolist writers decided to turn their attention to symbols instead. Inspired by the psychology of their time, these writers described symbols or images of dreams, sprung from their subconscious and thus not under their control. Symbols generate an infinite amount of meanings from one instance. Writing is for them akin to hypnosis, it is the planting of an idea in the reader's mind, without their acknowledgement. We must make our readers remember things they never experienced. The readers of symbolist writings are therefore always on the lookout for symbols and meanings, even when the authors themselves did not consciously write them. We see how these readers could too be in a state of aberrant salience, in a state of interpretative paranoia. However, AVGs did not create this kind of interpretative posture, 
they are a symptom of new spectatorship in the digital age. Indeed, it would seem the generations of users brought on internet and YouTube videos are more willing to invoke the ARG, AVG apparatus as a way to rationalize their viewing experience within digital apparatuses. To the point they invoke it aberrantly sometimes. The web series Petscop is a great example of such tendency. Created by Tony Domenico, who drew his inspiration from Ben Drowned, and published on YouTube between 2017 and 2019, this series showcases a supposedly lost PlayStation game from 1997. In reality, all the footage was produced by Domenico himself. In an interview with EGM now in March 2020, he states that he created a coherent narrative, but decided to obfuscate a great deal of it and even delete relevant footage in the final edit. This creates a chaotic narrative left for interpretation. However, there was no interaction whatsoever with the viewers. As such, Petscop is more akin to the symbolist's effort to create cryptic, open-ended stories, than it is an ARG or even an AVG. In the end, though AVGs are a 21st century phenomenon, they can be said to have fitted 19th century symbolism within the structure of ARGs and video games into one intermedial and virtual experience. These considerations lead us to a more ontological perspective. The AVG apparatus calls for clarifications regarding the concept of virtuality. To virtuality in its technological sense, the virtual reality extended by the digital revolution, we could add the virtual-actual dichotomy in an extension of Deleuze's proposal. The latter has the advantage of resolving the previous ontological dichotomies, virtual, real, power, act, essence, existence, abstract, concrete, without making the virtual less real. Of the virtual, it is necessary to say exactly what Proust said of the states of resonance real without being actual, ideal without being abstract. Also by bringing the virtual closer to the duration and especially to the subjective, Deleuze invites us to consider the subjectivating and therefore psychological side of the virtual. Si nous pouvons parler des AVG en tant que nouveau dispositif du virtuel, c'est avant tout par l'hybridation qu'ils opèrent. Hybridation premièrement du rabbit hole qui dans le cas des AVG n'est pas distingué du reste de l'œuvre. Le rabbit hole se confond avec l'ensemble du dispositif. Aussi, la possibilité d'investir sémantiquement chaque élément de l'œuvre la rend infinie du point de vue de son interprétation. En droit, chaque segment du dispositif peut faire l'objet d'un investissement sémantique infini, selon les sciences aberrantes expérimentées par chaque joueur interprète. La nouveauté de ce dispositif tient également à son incomplétude temporelle. Contrairement aux ARG canoniques, et malgré le nombre factuellement limité des objets composant les AVG, le jeu en tant que pratique dans l'AVG ne s'arrête jamais. En cela, nous pouvons également souligner la dimension de durée subjective que Deleuze attribue au virtuel en tant qu'il s'oppose à l'actuel. Virtuel qui, en dernière instance, se déploie dans la relation entre les états mentaux des joueurs et leur surface de projection, soit les éléments sémantisés au sein du dispositif. Davantage que des objets délimités, les AVG seraient ainsi plutôt un symptôme culturel, un signifiant au contenu hétérogène. Cette appellation est au mieux ambiguë comme les objets qu'elle désigne. C'est en vertu d'une récente Weltanschauung numérique que là où jadis l'on voyait mystère et sorcellerie, l'on voit désormais des formes virtuelles d'ARG. Autant les ARG sont identifiables et localisables, autant les AVG relèvent plutôt d'une psychose digitale collective. A ce titre, le métamédium ordinateur, qui est la synthèse technologique de médium antérieur, a partie liée avec cette psychose. L'internaute faisant plein usage de son accès infini à l'information, la Lynx Disease deviendrait davantage que le bon sens, la chose la mieux partagée au monde. Hey, honey. Hey, hey. Have you eaten yet? Not yet. What's up? You haven't eaten. Not yet, no. Why? All right. Uh, I was thinking about ordering a pizza. Okay. Go ahead and order a pizza. What should I, what should I get on it? Oh, uh, maybe some mushrooms and maybe... <laughs> <some> <laughs> 